Sir, how has school been this week? It's been great. Well, we've had some hard lessons this week. Yeah. And we've had two tests. And I did really well in one of them. You did? Well done. What he's not telling you is that the school doctor came around today. And Hera did very well in the eye test. <laughs> hey, that's not true. No, it's not. Harry did very well in natural science and it's because you helped us, Chef Jeff. I did? Yes. You remember, you showed us how heat energy makes things contract and expand. That really helped. I'm glad. Hey, the kettle is boiling. Ah, talking about heat energy, how do we know that the kettle is boiling? Because there's steam coming out of it. <laughs> What, what? I don't understand. Chef Jeff said he was going to make the safari kids some hot chocolate. But don't you need water to make the hot chocolate? How can he make it out of steam? What, what? And won't the steam hurt the children if they try to drink it? What, what? In fact, it's not the kettle that's boiling, it's the water inside. <laughs> I've never thought of it that way. There's one thing I don't understand. When the water boils, like this, and it bubbles and everything, is it disappearing? No, it's not disappearing. The heat is just changing the water into a different form. It's changing it into water vapour and steam. Water vapour is gas, it's invisible, and steam is tiny droplets of water. When you look at this water over here, you see, this water is cold. There's no heat energy here. So this water is liquid. And when we put the water into the kettle and the water gets very hot, it changes into a different form, into water vapor. Hmm. So when we heat liquid and it turns into gas, it's called evaporation. What happened to it then? Hasn't it just disappeared? No, it's just changed its form and it can turn back into water. Huh. Watch this. Now, when I take this cold glass and put it up to the kettle spout here, see what happens. Yeah. You see that? Once the water vapor hits the cold glass, it turns back into water. Can you see the water dripping down the glass over here? Yeah. When gas cools down and turns into a liquid, it's called condensation. Gee, I didn't know that happened. Well, can you think of another example when water evaporates? Mm, no. Okay, well, think about it. When your mother washes the clothes, what does she do with them? Well, she washes them, then she goes outside and hangs them on the washing line. Why? To get them dry. And why do they dry? Because they're in the sun. Yes, because they're in the sun. And the heat energy from the sun heats up the water inside the wet clothes. And when the water gets very, very hot, the water evaporates. The water goes out of the clothes and it evaporates. It's still in the air, but you can't see it. So, there, so is there always water in the air around us? Yes. But we can't see it. Well, sometimes you can. Have you ever gotten up uh, when it's really cold and made the house warm and noticed that there's water on the window? Yes. What is that? Why does that happen? That's water. It's another example of condensation. What happens is, is that when the warm air hits the window that is cold, the water vapor in the air turns back into water. And you can see the water on the glass. Gee, I never knew that happened. And you know in winter, when you go outside and you can sometimes see the breath coming out of your mouth. Well, what's happening is that inside your warm breath, there is water vapor. And when you breathe out of your mouth, the warm air hits the cold air and it turns to steam. Yes, I've seen that. Marvin. Yeah, boy, Marvin. I've just washed sheets and pillow slips. No, that, that's nice, that's nice. Uh, the only thing is, they're still wet. What are? The sheets and pillow slicks. Why are they wet? Because I told you I just washed them. Then I put them outside for an hour or two, and now they're still wet. So I can't put them back on the bed. Yeah, of course. You can't put them on the bed, they'll soak the bed. I know that, but I don't understand, Mervyn. When you wash them, you put them outside and they come back dry. 
Yes, Marvin, that's because I wash them in the morning. It's nine o'clock at night now. So? So, when you put things outside to dry, you need the sun to dry them. The sun warms them up and makes the wetness disappear. So you need the sun to, 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 to dry the sheets? Yes, you do. Okay, I'll put them out tomorrow morning, but I'm afraid we are going to have to sleep on the chair then, maybe. Uh, why must I sleep on the chair? Because I only washed your sheets to see how it works. Mine are nice and dry. Good night. <gasps> hey, come back! Do you know what happens to water vapor? It disappears? Yeah, well, you can't see it, but it's still there. What does water vapor do? Well, it has a really important job. It's all part of a cycle, really. The heat energy from the sun warms the water, say, in a river, and turns the water into water vapor. Then the water vapor rises up into the sky where it starts to cool, and condensation happens. What do you think happens then? Um, you can see it again? Yes, you can. It turns into clouds. Clouds are made of water vapor. Yes, and when the clouds get cold, it starts to rain. And when it rains, the water collects in the rivers and the streams and so on. And then it warms up again and evaporates. And so the cycle starts again. Wow, you know such a lot, Chef Jeff. <laughs> and now you do too. If you make the water hot, then it turns into vapor. And there's something we can see, so we know it's then. And when the vapor gets cold, then it turns back into water. Then the water comes back and it rains everywhere. Now I see, when the water in the kettle boiled, some of it started to escape as steam and water vapor. But so long as you don't let it boil away for a long time, there'll still be enough hot water to make hot chocolate. What, what? The water cycle is so simple. You heat the water and the water evaporates. Then when the water vapor gets cold, it turns back into water again, like rain. What, what? It's easy. <laughs> See if you can draw the water cycle. If you can, use the words that we use today to explain how it works. See you soon. Bye. If you make the water hot, then it turns into vapor, and there's something we can see, so we know it's then. And when the vapor gets cold, then it turns back into water, then the water comes back, and it rains everywhere.